In this video, we have a 7 gallon and a 9 gallon jug of water. So, and they're empty. We have a 7 gallon and a 9 gallon. And our goal is to use these 2 gallons and let's say some kind of hose or something with an unlimited water supply to measure out all the gallons between 1 and 9. So we want to use these 2 jugs of water and this hose to measure 1 gallon two gallons, three gallons, all the way up to nine. Now, I suggest you try this, you know, pause this video and give it a shot. And then I'm going to share my solution. And I'm wondering if there's a faster way to do this because I just solved this riddle and I solved it in a way that seemed natural to me. I wasn't looking for efficiency, but I am wondering, is there a better way to do this? So right away, I could fill up the seven gallon jug and that would give me seven gallons. So we were done with that one. And also, if I fill the 9-gallon jug, I get 9 gallons. Now, we only have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 more to go. So what I did first was to get 2 gallons. And the way I did this was by filling up the 9-gallon jug. And then pouring this into the 7-gallon jug. And if you think about what's going to happen, right, the 9 gallons, if we empty it all out into the 7-gallon jug, we're going to fill the 7-gallon jug up completely. So seven gallons will be in the seven gallon jug and two gallons will be left over in the nine gallon jug because nine minus seven is two. So I can get two gallons by pouring the nine gallon jug into the seven gallon jug. And now I keep going. And I'm gonna actually try to build up the situation. So um, I have two gallons in my nine gallon jug, right? And my seven gallon jug is full, but first to get the next one, I'm going to empty out the seven gallon jug. So now my seven gallon jug is empty, and I'm going to try and get four gallons. So I'm going to use the two gallons I have to get four. And what I could do is pour the two gallons from the nine into the seven. So these two gallons go into here. Right? And then what I can do is fill up the nine gallon jug all the way. So there's no more two gallons in here, there's nine gallons of water. And I can empty that into the seven. So everything I can now from the nine gallon jug into the seven. And what's going to happen? Well, there's already two gallons in here. If we empty out the nine gallon jug, how many more will fit to make seven? Well, well five more, right? So we'll have emptied five gallons from a full nine gallon jug into the seven gallon jug. And that means four gallons will be left here, right? Because nine minus five gives us four gallons. So again, we just emptied out the nine gallon, the two gallons from the nine gallon jug into the seven gallon jug, filled up the nine, emptied it again, and we're left with four gallons in the nine gallon jug. And we'll try and use that, excuse me, I think to keep going. So next, um, I've got the two and I've got the four. And actually here, uh, I got a little stuck, so I'm going to say I empty out both jugs and start from scratch. And this, this time I'm going to go in it from a different way. So here's my 9-gallon jug, and here's my 7. This time I'm going to fill the 7-gallon jug up all the way. So that's 7 gallons of water in here. And I'm going to pour those 7 gallons into the 9. So we have 7 gallons now in the 9-gallon jug, and the 7-gallon jug is empty. Erase that. Okay, so seven gallons in the nine gallon jug. And now I'm going to fill up the seven again all the way and pour everything I can into the nine. Well, how much will fit in the nine gallon jug? Well, it's already filled with seven gallons, so two more gallons can fit to make nine. And those two gallons taken from the five gallon, the, from the seven gallon tank, right, take those out, bye, will leave five gallons left. So we, use, we can do this to measure out exactly five gallons, and that's done. Okay, let me clear this off. And we keep going, and we're going to just keep resetting up this diagram. So here's our nine-gallon jug, and here's our seven. And right now, we have exactly five gallons in a seven-gallon tank, and we can use that. And here, we can actually use this to get three gallons, so I'm going to use the five to get three. And what am I going to do? Well, I'm going to pour these five gallons from the seven into the nine. 
So imagine I'm filling this up with five gallons. And now the seven gallon tank is empty. Clear this out. Okay. So, so I keep going here. I would have filled the seven gallon tank all the way. All right, seven gallons of water in the seven gallon tank. I'm going to pour this into the nine gallon tank. Right? So if there's already five gallons in the nine gallon tank, how much from the seven gallon tank will fit in the nine? Well, this, there's four more left, right? Five plus four is nine. And if we took four from the seven gallon tank, right, we pour those out in the nine gallon tank, what's left? Well, seven minus four is three. And we use that five now to measure three gallons. And we're on our way, we're almost there. I'm gonna keep going here. And now I'm gonna use three to measure out, to measure one, that's my next step. So I'm actually gonna leave the situation the way it is, but I'm just gonna clear it up because this diagram is, is sloppy enough. So I'm gonna draw this a little bit bigger. So here's my seven gallon, and here's my nine gallon jug. And currently there's exactly, I think we said, right, three gallons in the seven gallon tank. So how can I get one? Well, I'm gonna empty these three gallons into the nine gallon tank, right? Pour them out from the seven gallon tank. So there's nothing now in the seven gallons, and I've got three gallons in the nine. If I fill up the seven all the way, right? It's full of seven gallons of water, and I empty that all into the nine gallon tank, what will happen? Well, there's already three gallons in the nine gallon tank, so six more will fit in the nine gallon tank because six plus three is nine. And that means we've emptied six gallons from the seven gallon tank, right? Six gallons have been poured into here. So what does that mean? Well, if there were seven gallons, we poured six out, now there's one left. So in that way, we can measure out exactly one gallon of water. And now I could use this to measure out eight gallons. So now I'm gonna continue and I have the one gallon in the seven gallon tank. How can I get eight gallons? And you can always see it, right? There's this one here in the seven gallon tank and you know nine minus one is eight. So this is really gonna help us. So what I'm gonna do actually is just empty that one gallon into the nine gallon tank. So there's one gallon of water in the nine gallon tank. And it came from the seven gallon tank. Okay, so now if I fill up my seven gallon tank, right, all seven gallons, and I pour that into the nine gallon tank, what's going to happen? Well, we already had one gallon in there, seven more. It won't fill the tank all the way, but that seven and one will give us eight gallons. And now we've only got one left, the six gallon. So what do we do? Well, I can build off of what I have right now. I'm just gonna quickly resketch that. So in the nine gallon tank, I have eight gallons of water. In the seven gallon tank, well it's empty right now, but, but we can use that. What if I fill up the seven gallon tank all the way, so the seven gallons right here. So if I fill up the seven gallon tank and I empty that into the nine gallon tank, how much water will fit in the nine gallon tank? Well, there's already eight gallons in there, so one more gallon will fit. And that means we took one gallon from our seven gallon tank and now there's six gallons. So we are able to use these two jugs of water and this hose to measure out all these between one and nine. And I'm wondering, is there, first of all, is there a faster way to do this? And start thinking about what, what patterns we can see here. What's happening? And you know, starting with any two given jugs of water, what measurements can we make? And what can't we make? Those are some fun things to think about.
help her a riddle that I find really fascinating. And I love to solve this one because it presents really great issues for other riddles that are related. So let me get to the riddle and explain to you what it is. I'll pause the video and you can try and solve it. Now, the premise of this riddle is that you're trying to bake a cake or something or do something that takes four minutes. So your goal in this riddle is to measure four minutes exactly. That's your goal. You're measuring four minutes with a clock. Now the challenge is, uh, imagine, let's say you're in the kitchen and you're trying to bake a cake and you need to measure four minutes. Well, how do you do that if you have two clocks and one clock measures time in chunks of three minutes and the other clock measures time in chunks of five minutes. So the goal is, how do we use these two clocks to measure four minutes? Now if you're wondering how these clocks might work, imagine that the three minute clock, for example, what it does is it runs and every time it hits three minutes, it rings a bell. So it starts, it goes for three minutes, hits a bell, and then starts again. It goes over and over and over again in a circle. And every three minutes, it rings and goes ding, and you know three minutes have passed. Now the five minute clock also runs in a constant loop. And every five minutes, it rings, and you know five minutes have passed. So you don't even need to reset these clocks, they just keep running. And every, every five minutes, this clock rings, every three minutes, this clock rings. And what you can do in this riddle is you can start them at any time you want and stop them at any time you want. Also, you can reset them at any time you want. Um, and also in this riddle, we have to assume that resetting them doesn't take up any time. So it doesn't take, a, it doesn't take like five seconds to reset the clock. It just resets. So with that in mind, think about it. How would you use these two clocks to measure four minutes? And again, I, I'm going to pause. Well, you, I encourage you to pause the video before watching because I'm going to show you how I'm working this out. And as you're solving it, think, how much time do you really need to accomplish this? What's the shortest amount of time? Okay, and now, um, spoiler alert, here's my solution, and I think it is the fastest uh, way of doing this. So what I would do to start is start both clocks at the same time. And I'm going to run the five-minute clock with this green color and the three-minute clock with the pink color. I'm going to use lines to represent the time. So five-minute clock runs at the same time that the three-minute clock runs, what will happen? Well, they'll start at the same time, and after about three minutes, the three-minute clock will ring, and then it will start again. So let's just map that out for a second. If we run the three-minute clock, it rings, and then runs again. The next time it rings, what will you know? Well, the next time it rings, you'll know that six minutes have passed. So when the, the three-minute clock rings the first time, right? two minutes later, the five-minute clock will have rung. So you know that the time from the ring of the three-minute clock to the time that the five-minute clock rings is two minutes. So let's map that out. This is a two-minute chunk of time. And that actually is going to be quite helpful to you because when the five minute clock rings now, there's a one minute time, one minute chunk of time before the three minute clock runs again. So, run both at the same time. Three minute clock rings and then it resets. Now, when the five minute clock rings and this three minute clock is running the second time, you'll know that from the moment that the five minute clock rung, until the three minute clock runs rings again is a one minute time span. So let's look at that. That's a one minute time span. We're on the five, and then we're on the five minute clock again and see what happens. And you'll see that this problem is starting to develop nicely. Here this is a one minute chunk of time. Okay, so what's gonna happen now is you're able to bake this cake or whatever in four minutes. Why? Well because when the three minute clock rings the second time, from that moment until the five minute clock rings again is four minutes. If you look at it right here, right, this chunk of time is four minutes. 
what has happened is the three minute clock has rung twice and the five minute clock has rung twice and you can almost think about that oh well for the five minute clock to run twice that means ten minutes have passed and in that ten minutes the three minute clock has rung twice and that's six minutes and the difference between them is this time right here the four minutes you need so how do you bake the cake well you run them at the same time the three minute clock will run let it reset right now when the five minute clock runs out over here run it again this is the five minute clock mark the second running and when the three minute clock runs a second time and rings ding right throw the cake in because now there's four minutes left on the five minute timer and you can bake what you need to and, and this problem for me was particularly challenging and the goal is to say well how much time did you take to do this well I took 10 minutes and I think that's the fastest solution but I encourage you to try and find faster ways of measuring out the four minute time period do you need to run the clocks this long in order to measure out four minutes of time accurately or is there a quicker way to do it? All right.